So hello everybody, good day uh, for everybody. Thank you, you joined us. I hope you can hear uh, and listen and see our very well. Um, today we have special webinar, so it's a premiere, uh, but it's still in uh, format um, invite an expert webinar, but special series of webinar keeping the planet clean. Uh, and we have, I will go back uh, later for it, three sessions in this series. And today, I, my pleasure to invite you and our expert, refurbish and repair aging plants and equipment. So, let's start. As you know, Chesterton has this concept, keeping the planet clean. Or maybe you don't know, but now you know, 20 since 25 years. And uh, this concept, so protection of the world's resources and landscapes, is an integral part of Chesterton's business philosophy and in Chesterton's operations. So our manufacturing efforts, product development plans and consumer solution, focusing on different parts, so like compliance, resource reduction, and pollution prevention, reducing Chesterton's own carbon footprint, employee and customer environmental environment awareness. So all this information you can read uh, in details on our website. And let's go to the main topic today, so keeping the planet clean. And as I said, we have three series of these webinars, and today we start with refurbish and repair, aging plants and equipments. Then next month we will continue with uh, reduce water energy consumption and emission leakage incidents. And the next one, reuse the same assets for long lifetime. So why refurbish and repair? Uh, it's because we are focusing on um, refurbish and repair because we would like to offer to you, our customers, the advantages of circular economy. So as less resources are consumed, less new metal parts, less power consumption, so less waste uh, is generated then. And we can save money and increase return on investment. Why we are focusing on aging assets? Maybe you know that 70% of world production across a range of industry are major assets, so older one. And aging equipment presents several significant challenges to plants, reliability and production. So the structure of the webinar today uh, I will present uh, five lines of our uh, five product lines of Chesterton, if you don't know in short. And then we go to each of the line in focus of refurbish and repair. And uh, we will meet with our experts, with our five experts today, what makes us webinar especially interesting. And in the end, we go to the Chesterton remote Pulp file uh, field support. Okay, so as you know, Chesterton is one company and uh, provides five product lines, and all is all the line is keeping the planet clean and green. So protective coatings, lubricants, and AMRO maintenance repair overall, hydraulic seals packing and gaskets, and mechanical seals. And I'm glad uh, to have all the representatives of these five lines uh, today with us and Chesterton products. Um, Chesterton uh, upgrade your equipment with our five product lines. And uh, as you know, Chesterton designs, produce, and sells. And uh, as you can see in this centrifugal pump, we use all the five uh, 
product lines focusing on this and to satisfy your customers. So, okay, let's go to the topic, refurbish and repair aging assets. And the first line I want to introduce and invite our expert, it's Nick Wilson. Nick is a ARC application engineer in European region. Nick has over 30 years experience in the protective coatings industry and over those years has worked with many industries to provide corrosion and wear resistant material solution. So Nick has a Bachelor of Science in Analytic Science from Dublin City University and uh, Nick is, has certif uh, certificate of Frozio Level 3 Coating Inspector. So hello Nick. Hello Visily. Hello, Hello, everybody. Good um, afternoon. I suppose we uh, can. Uh, in, uh, pre um, you are from Dublin today, right? <laughs> I'm, from, I'm presenting from Dublin here today. Um, yeah, and it's so nice that everybody is wearing the green jersey to support the Irish thing here, the Irish connection. So. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> thank you for the introduction. And, okay, uh, Nick, so thank you that you joined us. So, what what makes your uh, line especially green? And well, okay, I, I'm going to try and uh, in in a few minutes get into that. Why is the arc industrial coating line particularly green? But um, really, the, the the reason behind it is because because we can help industry repair and refurbish equipment that would often end up in a scrap heap and. Um, you know that's the bottom line as you said i've been with chester in over 30 years and um you know i'm still always learning about different types of applications and equipment that we can protect and of course for industry particularly in, in this current economic situation i think is is even more important um that we can offer this type of, of opportunity so have i the control. I think also, um, basically, I think we should mention that um, we will we we'll take questions um, at the end of the all the presentations rather than going through them. Yes, during thank the you. reminder, so that we we try to go through all five lines uh, in time, and then in the end we will go back to your questions. Okay. Nick, okay, so um, yeah, oh, right. okay. So yeah, what we're what we can focus on with the arc industrial coatings is really to to bring back worn out equipment um, to as new and sometimes better than new conditions. And normally we can do this at a fraction of the cost of purchasing new parts. So you know, as one example here, this pump impeller. You know, this is something that we see thread industries um many different types of industries and a lot of this type of equipment ends up in the scrap heap and the customer purchases a new impeller a new pump or a new whatever um and it's not only the cost of those spare parts that is you know cost to our customers and the industries but it's the cost to generate and to produce these new parts you know the, the cost of generating steel or producing steel is a, there's a significant energy input to make any sort of different types of steels. So we can help avoid this with a lot of uh, different applications and different customers with different issues. But what are the main issues that our, our customers and that industries are, are faced with you know what are the main reasons that assets plants are aging you know it, it's all down to these um effects corrosion erosion or erosion corrosion abrasion and chemical induced corrosion so you know we see everything from the corrosion of, of tank roofs or different types of structural steel um pitting corrosion can be extremely damaging to equipment as can general corrosion we also see a lot of equipment in industry suffering from erosion corrosion you know this is 
this is a part that was suffering in, in seawater in a, um, a pump. And this particular part, you can see the, the, the age of this, but this was repaired and refurbished with arc from a what would generally be considered a, a scrap condition. We can also address the issues of abrasion. We can offer customers solutions to protect equipment against abrasion and to avoid the, the costly replacement of that equipment. Um, and also in areas where there's, there's severe chemical exposures. So where we have chemical induced corrosion, you know, from a, a wide range of different types of, of chemistries and chemicals used throughout industry. And we also should consider as part of assets, you know, every customer, part of their asset is their concrete, it's the structures that they have in their plant, the floors, the tanks, the equipment that is built out of concrete. This is also an asset and this is also suffering from aging due to primarily these effects of corrosion, erosion and chemicals. So this is another asset that is large energy to create concrete and cement um, and we can help restore and protect concrete assets. So, you know, what are the effects that customers are, are seeing when these um, assets age? So obviously there's a wide range of different things, but, you know, top of many people's list is environmental effects. Um, you know, where we have the loss of containment of a, a, a chemical or a fluid that could enter into, for example, into the groundwater, into a river, into a lake, you know, causing pollution issues. That is, a, you know, a severe effect on, you know, the environment um, and also can be a financial effect on the, the customer if this occurs. Um, another major issue can be health and safety. You know, when assets age, the integrity of equipment, you know, pressure vessels, um, pipelines, anything that's operating, if there is a, a, a serious defect that causes um, a failure, then the health and safety of employees in those areas can be can be affected, and and you know, plants need to address these sorts of issues to avoid that. Loss production is another um, effect that kind of, you know, customers will lose money when they have to shut down equipment frequently to repair it. So if we can, can keep equipment running for longer, uh, with a longer mean time between repair or between failure, then of course we can save uh, money. We can also, um, you know, affect their environmental uh, programs as well. Also contamination of product. So as the materials they produce, if there is corrosion, for example, in a in a tank or in a pipe, that may enter into the, the process stream, contaminating the products. Um, increased energy consumption is another effect, you know, with particularly with rotating equipment. And I think we'll address this in an upcoming webinar later on to talk about how we can save energy for customers. And last but not least is of course depreciation. So that any asset as it gets older, as it loses its value, um, there is there's a financial impact there. So what can we do? I mean a, a lot of hopefully a lot of the people online today are aware of some of the equipment that we can protect and repair. Um, with arc industrial coatings, but um, you know, for those that maybe are not that familiar, we'll go through some of the the things that we can protect. So we have everything from pumps. Um, I think that's pretty well known that we can protect both the internal of centrifugal pumps, vacuum pumps against corrosion, against erosion, corrosion, and against abrasion. We can also protect that asset from the exterior environment, so we can protect. Um, externally with coatings, particularly from our ceramic polymer product range to protect against uh, corrosive environments. We can also look at protecting valves, 
many different types of valves handling everything from hydroelectric penstocks, uh, water valves to valves handling severely aggressive slurries, chemical slurries that would normally be, you know, protect or manufactured out of very exotic alloys. So we can replace the need to produce these exotic alloys and protect these with with high performance industrial composite materials. Heat exchangers is another common area we can um, address issues such as galvanic corrosion between tube sheets and the tube bundles where you have different metallurgies that result in leakage between the tube sheets and between the two different sides of the, the heat exchanger. Um, that would lead to inefficiencies in the, the heat exchanger, can lead to contamination of fluids. So by protecting tube sheets and also by protecting the water boxes with coatings that will prevent galvanic corrosion, we can address some of these issues for our customers and of course allow the continued use of the, of the equipment. Um, we can protect tanks. We can protect tanks from a variety of different uh, media and fluids and chemicals both from very aggressive concentrated acids um, to alkali medias and to less aggressive um, materials, um, not only on the internal of our tanks, but also external protection. Here you see a floating roof tank protected again. And, you know, situations or applications like this, sometimes the the client is considering complete replacement of the tank. We're able to restore the integrity of that tank with the use of our composites, avoiding the replacement of steel plates with new steel plates. Mixers is another very common area where we see a lot of abrasive um, conditions. So we can um, repair and replace Again, some very exotic alloys are, are often used as we think about flue gas desulfurization plants. For example, they're using a lot of duplex steels and super duplex steels or rubber liners. So we can offer solutions with the ARC composites that outlast and outperform these types of materials. And we've many cases showing how that has been uh, in effect. Piping, again, both. Um, internal protection of pipes against corrosion or against erosion um, but also let's not forget external protection as well so we do a lot of external protection where we can increase the integrity of, of piping restoring it to um, use conditions elbows as well this is a, a, an example of an application in a pneumatic transport system where the materials inside of the pipe was causing wear to the elbows and eventually a breakthrough of the piping. And again, this, these are pipes that can be restored and repaired. And we've done many of these types of examples and applications very successfully with long-term uh, protection. Ventilators, fans, blowers, so, these are equipment that will, again, have um, some effect of efficiency. There we go. There's a picture of a, a nice shiny ventilator that's protected with an arc coating. Um, not only will this protect against the corrosion and erosion, but also in many situations, we're able to reduce the buildup of particles. That can be a common issue with with ventilators in many industries um, where particles tend to stick on the surface of corroded steel and that causes an imbalance to the um, impeller and it causes all sorts of um, problems and the bearings and usually requires st shut frequent shutdowns to clean the ventilator to remove the particle buildup so with the use of a high performance low surface energy coating, we're able to prevent the buildup of particles on these surfaces. Reducer spool pipes, 
Um, again, depending on the, the application, we can protect against abrasion, we can protect against chemicals, and we can mold these products as well to maintain the right tolerances and the right dimensions of the equipment. And cyclone, the starch cones, sumps, you know, these are just some of the, the equipment, you know, there's a lot more equipment there, silos, hoppers, screws, um, you know, and the name of the game for ARC is we can refurbish and we can put this equipment back into service. Um, again, finally, uh, you know, at a, a lower cost than replacing these with, with metal or with other technologies. So of course, to do this, we need to have some experience. We need to have people that are knowledgeable about the equipment um, and they need to know how to restore equipment like that. It's you know not always a simple process, but so we need the right types of applicators that first of all, understand how critical surface preparation is to the um, long-term performance of the coating. So without that sort of knowledge and without that professional approach, you know, does, we can we can have bad results so we need to have people that are able to understand how to apply these materials how to apply them properly and how to restore the equipment and if we do that correctly you know we can replace or we can restore this equipment to handle the, the very tough corrosive abrasive applications seen in industry and you know on the green team you know these coatings don't have any emissions they're 100 percent solids materials so we're not emitting the solvents into the atmosphere into the environment so good for the environment also good for the, the health and safety of the workers applying these materials and you know these are this technology doesn't require welding it doesn't require any other sort of source of flame or heat that is going to create emissions either and as i said before we should be able to, and we often are able to repair and protect many different types of equipment at a lower, much lower cost than purchasing new parts. Oops, and just finally, I flick through that slide. Sorry. Next this slide. One. Yes, there we go. So <laughs> it's gone again. Yes, there we go. Um, so we also, as many of you may be aware, we have a brand, the ceramic polymer brand of coatings that are also widely used to protect and repair and refurbish many different types of assets that are, you know, suffering from corrosion, suffering from um, the effects of atmospheric corrosion in particular, both metal and concrete structures. So that's that's my Part that's that's how just in the arc industrial coatings can help our customers from an environmental point of view. And now I think we're heading over. I'll head back, hand back to you, Visley, for uh, to continue. Yes, thank you, Nick. Let's go back to Munich, to Germany. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, you have really a wide range of. Uh, uh, refurbish and repair uh, equipment. So thank you. And let's go to the next part to inventory asset recovery and preservation, uh, lubrications and maintenance repair overall with our expert Ingo Stenner. Ingo Good afternoon, Stenner. everybody. How are you doing? Hello, Ingo. So if somebody doesn't know Ingo, Ingo is uh, European ELMRO Technical Service Manager. Ingo has over 23 years experience in the lubrication and EMRO business covering a wide range of positions. So he has worked in working, uh, have been working with many customers in various industries. So Ingo has a degree in chemical engineering from University Dortmund, Germany. So hello Ingo once again. Hello, Vitaly, and how, how, how's everybody? Hope everybody is doing fine during this corona time. Uh, I'm sure, and we can uh, enjoy this uh, session with you. And 
let's start with your part. So how can, what can you learn us today? Great. Yeah, I must say I was glad, you know, that uh, Nick already started with protecting of equipment and he went very well through the areas of repairing worn out ex uh, equipment. Means, you know, when the equipment is worn out, you know, how you can fix it with art coatings, with CP coatings. The other area Nick mentioned was uh, how to upgrade new equipment to be able to uh, resist environment, really harsh environmental condition, chemical conditions, and also very, very severe abrasive conditions. But there's a third area which we should consider, and that is, you know, material being kept in storage. And for customers, you know, in particular, very big plants, steel plants, paper plants, any sort of a bigger plant, they need to keep a lot of equipment in storage. Why do they need to do that? Because for the next shutdown, they need to have it. And to order new equipment might take a lot of time. Sometimes it might take months. Sometimes it might even take a half a year or a year. And if they're really not lucky at all, Sometimes the supplier even tells them, sorry, we cannot deliver at all. We cannot uh, provide you that equipment. So what is the customer doing during shutdown then? You know, they're really lost at that time. That is the reason why they keep a lot of equipment, second part pumps, third part equipment, bolts, bearings, everything in storage so that they are available when they're needed. But the tricky thing of this is when they keep something in storage, this equipment is exposed to the environment. Maybe if, you're, if uh, the customer is doing it in a sheltered area, it might only be exposed to the air, the humidity in the air. If the equipment is uh, stored outside the, uh, some buildings in a more exposed area, it's even exposed to rain, snow, wind, weathering, salt, anything you know, which is in the area there, which can attack the equipment. Attacking the equipment means also the equipment can start to corrode, rusts away, and when the customer needs it at the next shutdown, it might not be even suitable anymore. You know, it might actually be that bad corroded, that badly corroded that they can even not be able to put it into the machine. From Chesterton, we have two programs to help the customer, to help you, to actually protect your equipment in storage. And if there was corrosion already, we have also a program, you know, to help you actually to remove that corrosion with a, in a chemical way, not in mechanical, it's not like blasting or grinding away in a chemical way to actually protect the equipment as much as possible. One other area where uh, customers see a lot of corrosion as well on chemical and environmental attack is when they do shipping when they ship that manufactured product, and then they need to ship it to China, to India, South Africa, North America. Typically, it goes through the, over the Atlantic, goes over the Pacific, some other areas, you know, where it's, it's uh, a high salty environment. And I have seen customers telling me, listen, we made that machine here, we shipped it to India, and when the customer opened it, it was already corroded. So we have, a chance to help you to actually overcome this, to protect the equipment so that when it reaches the customer, it's still like new. Do I have the control? Ah, yeah, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Ah, here we go. So we have two ways of uh, helping you. First way is, yes, it was, is already corroded. What can we do there? We have two chemical uh, options, you know, to actually re either remove the corrosion or react with the corrosion. You know, that means, you know, that it's a chemical reaction. So it's a corrosion. Everybody knows corrosion peels off, exposes the metal underneath. You know, we want to make sure that this peeling off will not happen. It will be a solid layer and protect the other surface of your equipment. And then the other program we have in place is how to help you that it doesn't even start to corrupt. How do we protect your equipment so that it actually is protected for six months, year, two years in storage, even longer if you need it, so that when you need the equipment, 
you can actually use it. The first option, so think about it, your equipment is corroded. You can see that here, for example, on the right hand side, here's a corroded equipment. How can you remove the corrosion? And we have with our product 338 Super Rust Remover, we have an excellent equipment which you know reacts very fast to actually take to take this oxide layer off the surface and exposes the metal underneath. It brings a shiny silver surface again, which you can then protect, you can overcoat, you can protect it, or you can put it straight in your equipment where you need it. How does it work? It is a chemical reaction with an acid and uh, um, oxide layer, the uh, iron oxide. It removes the iron oxide off the metal, exposes the pure metal underneath. And uh, one way, which is an excellent advantage here, is it's a liquid. You actually can put your equipment into that liquid and it goes everywhere. If you have an equipment, you know, which has corners, which has gaps, the liquid goes everywhere and makes sure that the oxide layer is being removed. If you do a mechanical removal, you will not get into this fine nitty gritty areas in there of your equipment. This is a great advantage of what we can offer here. Um, of course, when you remove the oxide layer, it is exposed to the environment again. So it means, you know, if you want to keep it in storage again, you better protect it then. Otherwise, you might get a new oxide layer over time again. If you do not want to see a new oxide layer, but you don't want to go for a second step protection necessarily, you have the next option. You can chemically react the iron oxide of your equipment. And here you can, for example, see this is an equipment, shows the same corrosion, what we have seen beforehand. It's an iron oxide layer. It will peel off after a while, expose new metal. That new metal will peel off as well, and therefore it will corrode through. What we want to uh, provide you is a very, very, uh, react a very uh, resistant layer to protect the metal underneath, not a layer which peels off. Uh, we want to give you a layer which stays solid on it. It's like a, it's like a coating, only that it was in a reaction with the iron oxide, with the rust itself. This is how we do that. We do we use a 763 rust transformer, which contains very reactive iron tannate. And this very reactive iron tannate goes straight for the iron oxide and reacts with the iron oxide and provides an iron tannate coating on the surface of your metal equipment. What you will see then when you uh, do this and when you react to the iron oxide, that the color will change and will become very black. That's a typical color for iron tannate. The advantage of this is it will not attack any paintings, it will not attack any other areas, it will only go for the iron oxide. Only this specific area will react with iron tannate Nothing else will be attacked with it. This way, it will actually eliminate the cause of accelerated rusting of iron. And you have an extra protective layer already. It means you have actually two steps in one in this case. This iron tannate can be easily overcoated. You can overpaint it, you can put a commodity paint over it, or you can overcoat it with our corrosion protective materials, which I would like to go through now. And this is the second step. We know we went through the first step, we actually converted, either we removed or we converted the rust. We actually became an equipment which is super usable again. And now we can go the path from the conversion here, removal and reaction to also the chemical corrosion protection. If you have equipment in storage which was not corroded, you can go directly to the chemical corrosion protection stage, which is protecting it for storage and for transport. The first one what I would like to introduce to you is the 775 moisture shield. This is a very, very easy to handle product. You spray it on. If your equipment is still wet, maybe because of rain, or maybe it was just going through a washing station, a washing uh, uh, stop, you know, cleaning and washing station, 
you spray the 775 moisture shield on straight away or you immerse the equipment into 775 moisture shield, the 775 penetrates straight under the water, lifts the water up, and makes sure that there's no water in contact with the equipment anymore. That's a very fast step, making sure there can be no oxidization happening immediately when it's in contact with 775. The next step is it's a short-term protection. And when we talk about short-term, we are talking about around six months plus in environmental severe condition like rain and wind and salt environment. This is, you know, where it protects about six months. Means also it's an excellent product if you want to ship something to a different continent. Typically shipment takes four weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks maximum. Means when you use a 775, the customer on the other side will actually see the equipment in perfect condition. And in Goiza, I remember you produced some uh, videos, multilingual videos for this product. Absolutely, absolutely. If you're interested in that, you can find them on YouTube or you can find them on the internet. As well, if you cannot find them on the internet, please contact me and I will send them to you and we will walk you through the videos as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Or you can find it on LinkedIn channel also. On LinkedIn, yeah. Very, very good, yeah. Of course, you know, when we test our products, we test them under really harsh conditions. It means we call it the salt fog tester. The salt fog tester simulates the North Sea, simulates really, you know, the salty water, sun, uh, steam, smoke, everything is there. And it goes through, you know, a, a condensation process and uh, fogging up again, smoking. And this process, you know, of a salt fog tester will go on for as long as you like. So and then we place these plates in these extreme conditions and test every time how long will it actually take to start corroding. And you see com com uh, commodity products on the market who also claim that they have a corrosion protection capability. Sometimes multi-purpose uh, products as well on the market to say we do corrosion protection. We go through, uh, through them on the soil fog tester and we tested them all and we could see the 775 outperform them by far. It's very easy to remove as well. You can remove it with a solvent-based cleaner or you can remove it with a boiler water-based cleaner or like 235 Super Steam Cleaner from Chesterton or 803. Very, very easily to remove this equipment as well. If you need longer protection, you know, in very harsh environmental condition, rain and everything, then we would go for the next step, the heavy duty rust guard 740. This is under the same condition, will last at least two years in storage, outdoor storage. Indoor storage, you can have it for four, five, six, or seven years. No problem. It is a dry waxy film with an active component for corrosion protection. It means it's, active, it's not only a barrier shield, it's actually an active protection chemical in their itself feeling. And uh, we have seen quite a few big companies who are using that for all their equipment to protect. This case up here, for example, with a bolt, these bolts are all now protected with 740 for a big chemical plant. They did that for all their facilities. All this equipment is now protected with 740. The nice thing here with the bolts is as well, uh, we could show them that uh, they don't have to remove the 740 before they actually uh, assemble the nuts and bolts. Because once you put an anti seize on it, you have the same K nut factor as without the 740. Means this is a very, very attractive point for them as well that they don't have to remove it, even though it's also very easy to remove. You can remove it with a solvent based cleaner as well as with the 775. This product is uh, also translucent, but you see, see it, it, you get an amber color on it. And therefore, you know, this is also very easy to see and uh, you can really see where to remove the product if you need it and where it's still on it. So this gives you a little bit of an overview what we can do, what programs we have for you in place to protect your equipment in storage and in transport. And if you looked at from the environmental condition, it's the more equipment you can protect, the less you need to buy new equipment, which is also a financial thing, but also 
new equipment needs to be manufactured, needs to be getting new raw materials into, into the new equipment, new energy, energy has to be put in there. And we can make sure that by using equipment which you already have and protecting the equipment you already have, we can save you money and we can actually protect the environment at the same time. So, Vitaly, that was yes. my part. It, yes, thank you, very thank, much. you. thank you, Ingo. Thank you for your part. Um, and we go to the next session and to the next expert who's bringing right. back to life scrap cylinders. All right, all right. Uh, polymer solution. So this expert is Jotar Zicke, so our product line manager in polymer seals. Hello, Piotr. Hello, good afternoon. I guess you're in Poland, back to Poland. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> bringing uh, yeah a solution for our customers yeah so Piotr has experience as a mining cylinder designer since 2005 in addition he's specialized in mechanical engineering automation and has been a sales engineer for many years with a strong customer focus this multi-skilled engineer has developed and upgraded many heavy duty cylinders and rotary seals applications in a dozen years industrial experience in Chesterton. So hello Piotr and um, I give you the grants so you can go through your presentation. Yeah. Okay I'm sorry for my cat but I don't know today the cat wants to no, <laughs> make a show. Nice background. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, okay uh do i have control can i can i switch slides yes i think um okay yes it works so um my first question would be that uh if we see cylinders like these ones on the photo the question is can it be refurbished can it be really repaired uh, so as you can see here those ones are pretty uh, much corroded and uh Thanks to our colleague Ingo Stenner, we already know how to uh, how to deal with uh, rust and with corrosion. Uh, however, with the cylinders, uh, we will be focused more inside the cylinder because all the functionality of them is hidden inside. So that's why it's sometimes so difficult to understand and to determine if we can repair it or not. So the next slide shows. Um, how we do that? So in Chesterton, we uh, used to work with uh, with upgrades of cylinders for many many years, and um, we have a kind of systematic approach, a kind of system we use, and the philosophy uh, for those cylinders, which makes us and also our our business partners, our uh, cylinder workshops from our distributors as well. A little bit unique in the in the market. It is because we utilize the the know-how and this philosophy to provide a complete upgrade and to provide much better reability of these cylinders. Especially the lifetime is uh, in most of cases uh, much longer than in the beginning. So and in this case, um, the fact is that uh, when you have a look on the cylinders, when you see many different of them. In many cases, I would say the majority of them, the most of them, even when they are looking really bad, like the previous slide, uh, we are able we are able to support you and we are able to repair them and to refurbish them, so bring them back to life. So this is one thing. And then the system itself, yeah, it's kind of systematic approach, and it's noted here on this slide in the bottom. It's simple three points. We call it system one, two, three. So it's what you see in the bottom is that keep the dirt out, keep the fluid in, and keep the system supported. And each and every time when we have a scene in their in workshops, when we work with them or we work with our uh, with our partners, with the with the industrial users in the plants, we always focus on these three very important points because when you Take into consideration all the design of the cylinder, all the all the damages you see there, and uh, all the condition which is which is uh, found. If you go 
through this uh, system, one, two, three, and you fulfill each and every step and you put them together, it works in the system then and it provides the best results. And some of the cylinders are working even much longer than the new ones. So this brings really good effects. Okay, let me switch the slide. All right, it's a little bit slower. So here we have example how we can do that. Uh, so this is a cylinder uh, from aluminum extrusion plant. Uh, it's kind of heavy one, let's say medium sized. Uh, but this cylinder is also working in a little bit higher temperature and uh, it was badly scratched inside. So this is what you can see on photos uh, in the bottom. You see scratches of the rod in the stuffing box, in the gland, and also the cylinder inside was scratched. So uh, basically what we done, we just followed these three steps one by one. We repaired the surfaces of the, of the cylinder and of the rod. The rod was completely recrumbed. The cylinder was honed inside. It's a very precise grinding. So we came back to uh, surface conditions which allow this cylinder to work long. Uh, however, a geometry is changing a little bit, and this is a Chesterton technology which is providing solution that we can adapt to any change we did. Uh, so in this case, we installed our premium ceiling system uh, based on one, two, three system, and this cylinder was bring back to operation. So since 2012, this cylinder is in action. It's uh, working, and it's uh, absolutely very good result. Why? Because normally, even when when a user used to replace seals after they were gone, uh, it used to be uh, every two, two and a half year, uh, even when the cylinder was in relatively good condition, I mean the metal parts. So after changing to our refurbishment system, repair upgrade, uh, they achieved much longer lifetime, and as you see, it's uh, already eight years. Okay, so let's go to the next case. We have here another cylinder. These ones are not hydraulic ones. These are pneumatic, but they are pretty large uh, because the, the piston size here is 14 inch. So it's something like 355 millimeters. The rod is much smaller. It's just two inch, something about 50 millimeters. Uh, but the point is that these cylinders were very old. They were built in the 70s and the uh, manufacturer doesn't exist anymore. So there is no possibility to buy spare parts or to make them because most of them are uh, castings. Nobody will uh, do one casting. It's uh, economically having no sense. So the only way was to refurbish these cylinders somehow, and they were again scratched. In this case, we got to, we have to, um, we have to replace the, the rods. So we replace them with the brand new chrome coated uh, uh, stainless steel rods. However, the cylinders were uh, were modified a little bit and repaired from inside. And in addition, what you can see here. Uh, on the bottom uh, photo is um, the gray color of painting. It's not just a singular paint. We utilize a Chesterton technology with arc composite. So what uh, Nick Wilson showed you in the beginning, uh, a special coating, which is uh, very, very chemical resistance and protecting against corrosion, all these cylinders. Why? Because they work in very wet area in pulp and paper industry and it's a very difficult surrounding. And yeah? so normally they used to be corroded. Since we repair them, we refurbish them, uh, they are not corroding anymore. And if customer want to repair this coating, even in some small places, it's very, very easy to do. So uh, since 2016 in operation, and last time we did another ones, so customer, uh, the user is very, very satisfied and coming back to this point because it's the only way at the moment to bring these cylinders to life. Uh, not real replacements are available in the market. So it was the only, the only solution. We saved them. And then the next one, let's have a look. Uh, next slide. Excuse me, I went too far. Okay, so here, here you can see example of complete reparation, complete refurbishment of uh, presses. 
Uh, there were two presses. Uh, the bigger one you see in the middle on the upper photo, it was a bad looking corroded, very old machine. So on the right side, we see in the meantime how the press was disassembled to parts and started being uh, cleaned. Uh, then in the bottom, we see and around here uh, cylinders during during disassembly, during installing the seat. So as you can see from, from the old ones, we opened them. They were, of course, scratched, uh, worn and so on. So we repaired all the surfaces. We made a regeneration of them. Uh, Rechroming, and here you see starting installing the seals. And the next slide will show us a little bit more. So, here you see uh, a worn rod around uh, chrome coating. So, we repair that and we bring them back to uh, to, to complete uh, size. And also installing the seals. And in the end, was um, the, the cylinder were um, painted. And why in this way? Because in the end, the whole press, uh, which support this uh, user, uh, the whole press was upgraded. So the cylinders plays uh, the most important role in this press because they provide all the function of pressing. Uh, however, as you see on the left side, they were put together with the brand new hydraulic system, automation and electrics. And you see cylinders are there with shining shining rods so they are like brand new uh it was done in 2015 cylinders are still in operation uh warranty was long and the uh, customer is very very happy with that the press is like new with the modern uh control system so this is basically what we can what we can uh help to do is to to reuse to refurbish old scrap, let's say, because sometimes it looks really like scrap, very badly, very corroded. But until we still have a, a let's say, a thickness of metal parts, and when we can utilize technologies to repair some surfaces, the parts can be reused again and again. And we are very experienced in that, how to do that and how to adapt uh, the new the new conditions because. You cannot do the same with, for example, standard sealing system because it will be simply destroyed in very short time due to larger tolerances between metal parts. So this is what we do and we are upgrading the cylinders and then the lifetime is very often much longer and they can be utilized again and they are starting being more modern cylinders in this way. So thank you very much. That's yes, thank you, fun. Piotr, for your session and for your colorful slides. <laughs> Thanks. Um, let's go to the next uh, line, static equipment program, mechanical packing with our expert, Hans Decker. Hello, Hans. Good afternoon, Vitaly, everybody. Hans is Good our European product line manager in packing and gaskets. Hans uh, has 25 years of experience in the sealing industry, in functions, in engineering, corporate sales and marketing. He's an expert in stationary sealing, low emission sealing and legislation, flange reliability, valve reliability, gaskets and life loading. Uh, so Hans, um, I give you the control on your presentation. Okay, that's and, very uh, kind. Let's discover packing gasket line with you. Yes. So let me go. I'm not sure if I have, yeah, I have control, I think. Yeah, just click. There we go. So static equipment. Um, if we talk about static equipment, we basically talk about valves and flanges. Um, and in general, static equipment uh, yeah, is a very big, uh, there's a bit of a delay in my clicking, so uh, I have to deal with that. Um, so major maintenance and operating expense, uh, there was an investigation or re some research done um, by hydrocarbon uh, magazine a few years ago to uh, what basically the expenditure was in, uh, in in the general refinery and petrochemical plant and it turns out that really 
a, a, a large part of the expenditure goes to static equipment, so to valves and flanges and as well heat exchangers. Um, so a very normal strategy, and a, specifically for the for smaller valves uh, and flanges, is to basically cut them out of the system and to basically throw the whole thing away. Um, but that is not really necessary. That's mostly done because uh, of, of course, for if you have if you talk about a very small valve, to repair that valve is usually um, uh, more expensive than um, to to buy a brand new one. But there are actually technologies to uh, repair those valves and to bring them even in a better state than they were before. So all valves can be refurbished. Um, picture on the left shows a a control valve that is leaking. So in many times older valves, um, yeah, they do uh, wear all the designs of valves. They have as well um, uh, very deep stuffing boxes. With usually with some um, uh, a little bit um, wider clearances as well. Uh, some wear and tear has taken place. Um, so what the first thing we usually, what we do in an older valve, especially if it has a, uh, a deeper stuffing box is to, to reduce that stuffing box to the a depth of five rings with a carbon sleeve. Uh, and that carbon sleeve that we apply does, does a number of things. First of all, it, it acts as a bearing. So very similar to what uh, Piotr actually said for the cylinders. With his one, two, three system, um, um, the third step that uh, Piotr mentioned was to, to support uh, the stem and that's basically what we do as well with um, these carbon sleeves. The second thing we do with these carbon sleeves is, um, or the third thing actually, um, is to, um, we can make the clearances very exact. So to really minimize extrusion uh, of the packing itself. Um, and that actually improves the, uh, the MTBR of the whole system as well. Um, so that's what we what we can do. So that part of that is basically we, we, we change the dimensions of the stuffing box a little bit and we, we support the stem very well. Uh, the other thing that we can do is um, even if, if there's an old valve that has, has not really been made, uh, keeping in mind the very strict emission regulation that you have nowadays, um, if our system and including the low emission packing, we can bring that valve actually uh, to a modern condition where it can actually perform as a low em as a modern low emission valve. Uh, so that's what we can do. The other thing we do as well is um, we don't only provide products, but a very important part of uh, making a valve seal reliably and during a long time is actually gland force control. Uh, so what we do is as well, uh, we provide, for example, apps for the for your mobile for for end users of valves, so that they can use uh, and calculate uh, the right torque for a valve, so that um, you get um, very good sealing capability in combination with uh, low friction and operability of the valve. So those are all things that we can do. Um, yeah, another thing um, when we talk about corrosion is um, many times the, the valve stems can get corroded. So we cannot really fix that with our products other than with um, uh, with machining it. Um, but what we can do is so we can install uh, graphite packings that basically uh, have corrosion in inhibition uh, in, in there that can basically can prevent that the corrosion might uh, occur in the future. So there's a number of things that we can do. Um, so the other equipment um, that we deal with are aging flanges. On the picture on the left, you see a heat exchanger that has a, a clamp on it, uh, a fermanite clamp, uh, where basically uh, some um, injection has taken place of uh, a sealing compound because that. Uh, flange obviously was leaking. So that's something uh, that is commonly used uh, if, if the flange starts leaking. Um, what we basically can do is uh, we 
it can help the customer to uh, restore the flange phases. So uh, Nick has been talking about that already, uh, already a little bit. Uh, with coatings, for example, what we can do as well with partners, we can um, uh, have the flanges uh, machined. Um, and even a, val a flange that hasn't performed so well, just by using a high performance gasket, um, we can improve uh, uh, the ceiling there. Um, and to make this ceiling last for a long time and to Pre uh, prevent leakage during uh, thermal fluctuations, etc., and pressure surges. We can uh, apply live loading, for example, um, to reach the uh, MTBRs that are required from shutdown to shutdown in plants. Um, and what we can do as well is uh, we can offer some engineering services where we can do an analysis on flanges um, to basically again calculate the optimal. Uh, torque we put on the bolts, uh, making sure that uh, there will not be any deformation of, uh, of the flange itself, but at the same time, um, having the optimum ceiling perform performance on that flange. So what I'll take you through now are a few examples of, uh, of some valves and flanges that uh, uh, that we have upgraded. So the first one is um, uh, our specialist in a power plant in uh, in Poland. Uh, that plant basically had four fissure control valves that were basically not performing uh, so well. So there's basically we're dealing here with uh, high pressure, high temperature steam. So these valves, they were basically leaking uh, excessively uh, steam leaks and basically those steam leaks uh, they caused a erosion pad in the packing and in the in the stem itself and basically had to uh, yeah be repaired regularly so the big challenge with control valves is that uh, control valves they basically regulate the flow of steam uh, for example to a turbine or in other parts of the system but the the thing that happens in the control valve is they they basically that valve stem is, is continuously in operation so and if the valve stem is not um, not standing still and it's continuously in operation what it basically does it, it it wants to move that packing up and down all the time so you get a lot of um, relaxation of packing and a lot of extrusion of packing because of that so um, and in this valve the same thing happens basically uh there was high stem friction as well which is something you don't want in any valve uh there was some corrosion taking place extrusion and basically every year they had to replace the packing set um so what they did is they upgraded uh the packing set to a special packing of Chesterton, which, which is the 5800 g which is a wedge graphite packing that you can see on the on the picture here um and this wedge design basically assures uh, that it is a very, very good transfer of plant force to the packing itself. And this packing in general has about 30% less friction than a, a standard packing set. And um, um, to compensate for the for the movements of the stem, uh, we applied as well live loading. Uh, so we keep a continuous force on the gland. And um, this uh, these valves are now in operation for two and a half years since we installed them and they're running fine without friction problems and uh, without leakage problems. So that's a very good example. Um, another one that I want to show you is in a, in a gas plant in Bahrain. Uh, we were dealing with 20 block valves that um, had as well leakage above the allowable limit. Uh, they were basically going around with um, sniffers and yeah these valves they were just leaking excessively um so this we're dealing here with lpg higher temperature higher pressure again so what we applied here is uh our style 1622 packing um this packing is in essence spool packing uh and we use that packing actually for a lot of valve oems as well uh where we supply the packing um 
and to a, a lot of end users as well. So this packing basically is a development of the last yeah, eight to nine years uh, when we released this. Um, and this basically has pretty much all of the low emission approvals that you can get for, um, uh, for a block valve packing. So we have API 622. Uh, there we have the, the German TA Luft. So we guarantee that this packing um, basically can seal a block valve for at least uh, five years below a leak rate of 100 ppms. And um, in this particular case, the valves basically are not leaking uh, and are in operation uh, for, uh, for almost two years now, actually. And uh, we basically guarantee that they will not leak uh, uh, in the first five years, but in general, we, uh, they last a lot longer. So, and then um, the last example I want to show you is a nice example uh, from Spain uh, on flanges. So this was in um, a refinery in the, in the north uh, east of uh, Spain. Um, the customer had a number of flanges as well sealing LPG. Uh, so relatively large flanges. Um, and the big problem there was that there was a very, very high fluctuation in temperature. Um, so we basically, uh, we could see in the information that the customer provided that uh, over time, there were yeah, rapid fluctuations in temperature. And this basically because of the, uh, the shrinkage of the flanges, uh, and the difference in shrinkage and expansion between flanges and bolts, uh, they were leaking actually very frequently. Uh, so these as well, every year they need to be needed to be uh, repaired. Um, so what we did is um, we basically made a study using um, the, the calculation in Chester and we Chester and we have an EN 1591-1 calculation software. This EN 1591 is a uh, standard, European standard for the calculation of uh, flanges, basically. This is, has its, finds its origin in, in Germany where the emission regulations are very strict. And it basically, uh, with this software, you can analyze and calculate under multiple you can see that on the right bottom and the multiple um, conditions, uh, operation conditions, uh, you can study how much uh, deformation there will be in a flange. So what you basically can do is uh, uh, you can calculate the maximum torque you can put on that flange to make it seal optimally uh, without getting too much deformation in that flange. So we did that. In combination with a camprocal, with a Chester and camprofile gasket, uh, which is basically a very low emission gasket, which is uh, is very um, um, reliable. Uh, we applied as well live loading, which we are able to calculate in this uh, software that we have as well. Um, and the installation was installed. Uh, the installation was supervised uh, by our Chester and partner. So. Um, we solved basically the leakage. Uh, flanges has been leakage, uh, leak free, and um, we guarantee that they will be leak free uh, for at least three years. So um, yeah, these were some of the examples I wanted to show you. Mm -hmm. um, so you. I hand you back the control, uh, Vitaly. So thank you very much for uh, for your attention. Thank you for your yeah contentful cases. Yeah. So um, and we go to the next line to the last line for today mechanical seals repair hello in uh, enrico enrico is our expert in roma and we don't hear you no so as soon as you doing your audio i introduce you enrico is a product line manager for mechanical seals for europe and region enrico has 15 years of experience in the sealing industry in functions related to field sales and marketing. You're an expert in split sales reliability and efficiency improvement programs 
troubleshootings and trainings. Uh, Enrico gathered direct experiences in several industries like hydrocarbon processing, power, water, and wastewater treatment. Hello, Enrico, once Hello. again. Good, we can hear can you. Hear yes, we can hear you perfectly. And I give you control to introduce mechanical seals repair. Yeah, thank you, Vitali, and thank you all for your time. So, thank you, thank you for your uh time that you <laughs> waited for all the lines <laughs> right so um, uh when we talk about mechanical seal repair we are talking about me uh mainly our certified seal repair program uh just like uh the other colleagues were saying talking about the refurbishment of, of pumps or of cylinders we need expertise to do uh, the repair of a mechanical seal. And that's what, what we offer with our network. Uh, this network is audited every three years. Uh, we ask them to follow the Chesson procedure so that the mechanical seal, uh, a worn out mechanical seal, is restored to like new at a fraction of the new seal cost. We can do that primarily for the Chesson mechanical seals. We can do that also on demand uh, for the other brands of mechanical seals in a program of upgrade to chest. And uh, you have a complete um, certified approach with a test in order to see that the uh, repair has been done properly. We can offer you troubleshooting report, um, analysis report, and so that the, uh, in the case of the chest and seal, once it is repaired, it is an official product just as if it left uh, the uh, headquarter in Grove. So, uh, putting back the things into their context, let's let's take a um, centrifugal pump. Of course, we can talk about any kind of uh, rotating equipment. We will see some uh, case histories today um, about also mixers or turbines. But taking a pump, uh, the mechanical seal is the is can be considered the pump's fuse because the mechanical seal is there to absorb all the stress from the process side so the pressure the temperature the media the cavitation and also all the stress from the equipment side so uh, what's the shape of the bearing if the coupling has been done correctly if the pump shaft is bending etc etc so we can understand and i guess that's also the experience of our attendees today that 69% of the time when we talk about an equipment breakdown it's actually a ceiling breakdown so it's quite often that uh, in an industrial plant a mechanical seal fails and needs to be repaired so that's where our program enter uh, into place uh, because we offer the complete service of receiving the worn out seal, analyze its shape, how, is, uh, how are the different parts. We will see in the next slide uh, what are the main components of a mechanical seal and where we uh, act to repair them. After that inspection, we repair all the components that can be repaired and especially the seal faces when they are in silicon carbide or tungsten carbide can be relapped with a monochromatic light interference system to understand if the flatness is uh, following the technical specifications. Once we have done that, we can then rebuild the seal with, by the way, also the um, service and the knowledge, just like we do for the flanges or for the cylinders, to give you also uh, some proposal to improve the existing seal. So uh, some changes in the design, some changes in the materials. Uh, it's not just repairing in the terms of changing a spare part, it's also uh, refurbishing it in a clever way so that the new seal lasts longer than the old one. And uh, if we look at, at it in a schematic way, we can say that mechanical seal repair means basically recycling mechanical seals. Let's take a generic equipment shaft, rotating equipment shaft. Uh, 
every mechanical seal is made out of a rotati, rota, rotating part and a stationary part. What we see here in the drawing is basically a component mechanical seal with the rotary part turning with the shaft and the stationary part sealing on the casing of the equipment. So what can we do about the mechanical seal repair here? We can, for example, rework the metal parts uh, as long as there is enough material to do so. We can also, uh, or at least we must replace the springs, the springs and the secondary seal, the O-rings and the gaskets. That's the things that we do not like to reuse. Uh, we would like from this point of view to have always new components in the repaired mechanical seals. On the other side, seal faces that are the heart of the mechanical seals can on the contrary be relapsed, especially if it's in a hard material like silicon carbide or tungsten carbide. Carbon faces usually we prefer to replace them with a new one, but effectively if you have for example a silicon silicon carbide mechanical seal, we can lap both, not always, but we can do that depending on the shape of the seal faces. We'll see some examples in the next slide um, so that you're not forced to buy a new seal or even to buy new seal faces that are the most expensive part of the mechanical seal. And that's, uh, of course, applicable to the component seal, but that's applicable to any mechanical seal, cartridge seals, split seals, gas seals, any, any mechanical seal can be, should be repairable. All chest mechanical seals are easy to repair. They are designed to that. Um, and we, uh, we will see also in the next slides that we uh, have experience in repairing also non chest seals. What's the logic behind that in addition to the fact of uh, putting the mechanical seals in the circular economy? So avoiding you to buy always a new seal when the old one is uh, broken. Uh, we are reusing the same materials, but we are also saving you money because. Hey, that block. Is it is it working? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, if we take time zero, that's the first time that you buy a new seal, a new mechanical seal, seal assembly, that's the SA. Of course, the, 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 pr the purchase price of a new seal is relatively high. And what we are offering you is that once you have installed this new mechanical seal, this seal will last a certain time called the mid time between repair. And at the first repair, we are offering you just to do a simple repair program called repair A. Just lapping the faces, replacing the springs and the o-rings, some cleaning on the metal parts is usually just enough. And for a very small fraction of the price as new, you have your seal back in service. Some new time between repair occur, then you have a probably some more wear of these components. So we might be forced to install new faces because the old faces are no longer lappable or not longer repairable. But still, you have for the second time repaired, refurbished that seal at a fraction of the price of the new seal. Back in service again, you still have some mid time between repair. And then we, we sometimes have even the opportunity to repair it once again with some more reworking on the metal parts that now have been wear, wear, are wearing out due to the abrasion, the uh, chemical attacks, or the erosions, uh, all the uh, phenomena that occur to the equipment, just like Nick showed before with the pumps or the uh, other assets of the plants do occur to the metallic part of the mechanical seal as well. So at the end of that third or fourth or fifth repair, probably the mechanical seal will no longer be repairable and you will be forced to buy a new one. But at least you have saved a lot of money during these two, three, four, five seal, uh, seal break, where we offered you to repair it instead of being forced to buy a new one. So let's see uh, some examples of that coming from the field. 
and I really thank uh, Zoli for sharing that. So the first example comes from a pulp and paper plant, a uh, special pharma grade paper in Poland, a Day Dietrich horizontal mixer dealing with water epoxy resin. Um, that equipment was a second hand equipment purchased by the customer and they asked uh, our uh, site, Chesson Hungary, that is a seal um, repair center, an excellent site of seal repair center, to double check if the existing seal could be repairable or not. And that's what they, uh, our guys discovered. Uh, they looked at the existing seal. That's how it looks like when it was completely disassembled and uh, opened. They made some detailed check on the shape of the faces. Remember that the mechanical seal faces are the heart of the, of the seal. So here you have the stationary ceramic face with some chipping. You have the rotary face with uh, some other chipping in the internal diameter, especially. And despite this situation, we were able to turn that uh, old mechanical seal, secondhand mechanical seal, into a as new mechanical seal like this, very nice looking, and of course working very well with uh, irrelevant leakage since more than one and a half year in that secondhand equipment. So that's a way to save money, but also to save resources from the environmental point of view. A more um, difficult application is the next one. It comes directly from Hungary. And we're talking about a hydropower plant. That's a Gantz Kaplan hydro turbine, um, where the existing seal was leaking too much and was causing a, a loss of efficiency of the um, turbine. I guess my image is frozen, but I suppose you're still listening to him, to me. Yeah, you made the screenshot, but... Uh... <laughs> okay, let, let, let's go forward as long as you listen to me. And anyway, you so, have less minutes left. So. Okay, okay, no problem. So, uh, in this case, uh, it's a case history from 10 years ago, and you can see in you know, what bad shape was the existing original equipment mechanical seal. But despite that, uh, our colleagues in Chester Hungary took it down, cleaned it, uh, analyzed it, and rebuilt it as new or even better than new, despite that this seal is even a split mechanical seal. So with split faces, split secondary uh, O-rings, etc. So this is how the seal looks, uh, looked like when it was installed back again in the hydro turbine. Now, uh, as a final slide um, from, uh, from my side, not always the mechanical seal is repairable. So here we have an example in a crude oil tanker in Greece, where the Shinko double-ended pump dealing with crude oil was in need of repair and including the mechanical seal repair. But unfortunately, the uh, corrosion from the seawater and the poor maintenance practices did wear out that seal too much. So in that case, the uh, seal repair service was not there to propose to repair the existing seal, but to offer you a new seal, a new chest and seal customized to that application, to that equipment, that of course uh, is there also to offer you latest generation design in order to double the seal left, uh, the solid seal life. And in this case, also the advantage of a less complicated installation. So um, that was uh, my part. I guess I'm live back now. So that's yes. the final picture of the equipment with the new seal. Uh, that replaced the old one that was, in this case, unrepairable. Mm -hmm. Ritaly, back to you. Yes, thank you, Enrico. Uh, and we go fast to the next part. But before we go to this, you can type your questions if you have. So during this, I will 
tell you about some uh, remote field service that Chesterton provides to in this uh, difficult times. It's not only in this difficult times, it's software uh, naming help lightning that um, uh, can help us to merge re reality will bring our experts immediately in front of you applications. So uh, not in life, but uh, you, we can use your mobile phone, your tablets and get the contact with our experts and we can provide solution and uh, yeah, without any travels, without safety impacts. This uh, program, this service is uh, now uh, available and our experts are um, training on this. Um, maybe we can talk about later. And uh, I know, for example, Piotr made a big experience with it. Um, if we have time, you can share your experience later. Also, today, actually, we have paperless uh, day day or without paper and uh, we Chesterton provides a lot of ebooks available for downloading so we don't need to print or if you don't need printed catalog you can down download on our websites or in Showpad or on all available resources. So in the meantime you can ask the questions. Thank you for your time and interest and thank you experts that you spent so much time and uh, shared your experience and cases for this um, interesting topic. And uh, yes, if you have questions, you can type it in the meantime. And uh, Piotr, maybe now you can say about your experience with the remote service. Uh, yes, Vitaly, thank you. Uh... Yeah, we, we already tested and we started using that. Um, I can say that uh, it's pretty easy because it's based on the mobile phone. Uh, this is probably the best the best way to go. Or if somebody is using a tablet, however, it is uh, it is very simple. We are just sending invitation to call. You don't have to you don't have to install any extra software or something. There are two ways. You can utilize a browser in your phone or you can install an uh, app from store, which is uh, free. So you don't have to spend extra money for that. And uh, having this application, it is, it is just imagine that, uh, let's say I'm sitting in front of my desk and you are, you are in the plant and you went to a cylinder or a pump. And normally, if you can call an expert or some supporter to come to your plant, you go together, you watch the same pump, or same, same equipment and you see exactly what is going on if there is some problem or some uh, let's say failure analysis needed or something like that or installation support uh, and in this case it is it is when we cannot travel I mean physically because of the situation we have now um, or uh, your supporter is a little bit far away let's say I don't know two hours drive three hours drive and you just need a quick, uh, quick uh, advice. Uh, so it's good enough to have call together. You can you can come to your equipment. You can you can just watch from your phone with your camera to this equipment. And I'm seeing exactly the same. But in the same time, we can put our hands in front of the camera. So I can show you with my my finger, my hand that screw this or repair this or adjust this one or use hammer and put here. <laughs> Uh, not here. So uh, yeah, we can go this way, and um, so the view from my camera and your camera is merged in the same time. So it's uh, virtually it works very similar like live meeting, a uh, live uh, visit, let's say, um, and watching the same thing. So we did some tests with uh, with some uh, users already. Uh, mostly for failure analysis, and we found that really surprisingly easy to do, easy to use, and uh, the most important, we found, for example, failure uh, causes in uh, three cases immediately, quickly, nicely, and uh, and we solved the problems. So, if anybody is looking for um, this kind of support, it's just good enough to uh, contact with us, 
then we can set up this call, uh, schedule this call, and uh, and then we can do that. So it's it's also a good solution for uh, to keep the planet green <laughs> without traveling Absolutely. in this uh, difficult Burn time. Less fuel. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, we are out of time. So I would like to thank you, all of you. Uh, our guests and our experts and uh, stay tuned for our sessions invite an expert and keeping the planet green for the next topics thank you okay. have a nice day thank you thank you, thank you. Bye. Bye. bye goodbye goodbye